Hi, my name is Steve Fiorelli, and I'm a security SE with Barracuda Networks in Canada. In today's video, we are going to take a look at how you can use the Barracuda CloudGen firewall to perform web filtering and web security for your users browsing out to the internet. All the features we look at today are available on the CloudGen firewall, either in a physical form factor, but also in the virtual and public cloud deployment options. Today's demo will showcase the web filtering and web security options from the perspective of a user. We'll take a look at what the user sees when you set up some of these different URL filtering policies, as well as some sub application filtering. Next, we'll take a look at how you can protect the user from downloading malware and advanced threats to their system. Following that, we'll take a look at how you can control the types of files that users can actually download. When it comes to Google, we'll see how you can enforce Google Safe Search across your network, as well as how you can enforce that only corporate G Suite accounts are accessed. Finally, we'll finish by looking at some added functionality available on the CloudGen firewall. Switching over to our web browser, let's take a look at what happens when a user tries to visit a blocked category of websites. I'm going to search for PokerStars, and when I try to visit this website, I receive the following web page block message. This web page has been blocked because I've configured the policy to block access to gambling websites. Let's take a look at some of our other options instead of just a straight up block. Let's take a look at browsing to Facebook. In this case, when I try to visit Facebook, I receive the following warning that this web page might have some undesirable content. And that's because I've set up the policy so that if I try to visit any social networking website, I will receive the following warning, which I have to accept. And this makes a special acknowledgement on the CloudGen firewall. I could also have the CloudGen firewall silently alert that the user is trying to visit this type of website. Now let's take a look at what happens when we want our user to be able to request access to a blocked website. In this case, I'm going to try to visit realtor.ca. And when I try to visit this website, I'm receiving the following block page. However, this time I configured the setting so that I can request access to this website by my IT administrator. My IT administrator is able to approve this access for a set period of time. And in fact, it would allow me to visit this category of websites for that time. So in this case, real estate. Now let's take a look at the ways that you can configure different sub application level filter policies. In this case, I've gone to google.com and what I'm going to try to do is visit Google, let's just say shopping. And I can see that this is allowed. I'm on Google shopping. Now let's see what happens if I try to visit Google Drive. In this case, the application is blocked. So what we can actually do is we can configure certain sub parts of an application to be allowed while others are blocked. So for example, you could allow Google Maps, but maybe you don't want to allow access to Google Photos. You can do the same thing with Facebook, Office 365, or some of the different cloud application websites that you could think of that are out there. All right, now let's take a look at how the CloudGen firewall can protect the user from downloading malware or advanced threats to their system. Let's browse here to the iCar test file website and let's try to download the test file. All right, and the CloudGen firewall signature based antivirus has protected us from downloading the file. If this was an unknown file that did not have a signature, we could send the file up to the cloud based advanced threat protection service. The service would run the file through a series of steps to determine if it was safe or not with the final step being to run it in a sandbox that's hardware based. Should the file be safe, the CloudGen firewall would allow the download. And if the file was unsafe, we can prevent the user from downloading that brand new type of file. Now let's take a look at how the CloudGen firewall can prevent your users from downloading certain file types. I'm going to search for PuTTY, okay, which is a free SSH client. I'm going to visit the PuTTY download site here, download it here. 
And I'm going to attempt to download this executable file to my system. Okay, and when I do, I'm immediately greeted with a file transfer blocked message here. So what I've done is I've pre-configured my CloudGen firewall to block executable file types from being downloaded to my system. You can actually configure the CloudGen firewall with many other types of files that perhaps you don't want them to download. So for example, if you wanted to prevent them from downloading audio files, you could do that in addition to things like this executable file. Now let's take a look at some of the different Google filtering options available on the CloudGen firewall. I'm going to search for the search criteria weapons. In this case, you can see that this search was run with safe search turned on. And what I've done is I pre-configured the CloudGen firewall to enforce that all Google searches are done with safe search. If the user were to try to turn this off, and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna turn off safe search, you can see that once again, the search runs, but still it's in safe search. So what we've done is we've enforced that the user cannot turn off the safe search feature. Going back to Google. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Gmail. And I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can filter the types of Gmail and G Suite accounts that are accessible. I'm going to go to sign in. In this case, I'm going to put john at gmail.com. And I receive the following message that this account is not allowed to sign in to Google on this network. You can actually pre configure the CloudGen firewall to only allow your corporate G Suite account from being allowed to log into Google. Now let's take a look at some of the added functionality available on the CloudGen firewall that we've not yet reviewed. In addition to being able to set up all of what we've seen so far, you also have the ability to apply it for specific user and user groups. There is a transparent AD agent that is available that you can run on your domain controller to identify who a user is without them having to do any sort of login. We can also integrate with other authentication server types to be able to identify your users. Another option is to use a captive portal. With a captive portal, a user would have to authenticate to a web portal page in order to gain access to be able to browse out to the internet. At that point, you would be able to track who the user is and set specific web browsing policies. There's also application level control that can go even deeper than what we've looked at today. And I'm talking going beyond just HTTP and HTTPS. Application control on the CloudGen firewall will allow you to set policy for different types of software that is connected to the web. So for example, if you wanted to prevent users from utilizing certain types of VPNs or using types, certain types of software, for example, Dropbox or different BitTorrent clients, this is something that can easily be controlled on the CloudGen firewall. With the quality of service options available on the CloudGen firewall, you can prioritize or deprioritize certain types of internet traffic. For example, you could prioritize Office 365 traffic and deprioritize YouTube traffic. So you don't have all of your bandwidth being consumed for non-business critical applications. When it comes to scheduling, you can apply policy based on certain times of day. For example, you could allow Facebook during lunch hours, but otherwise block access to Facebook. When it comes to reporting, reports can be generated to supply management with details on your user's web browsing habits. You can generate a report for your entire user base, or you can additionally generate reports for a specific user or user groups. Thank you for watching this presentation. For additional information, please visit barracuda.com. You can also contact your local Barracuda sales rep. Thank you.